Hey guys, Zart here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to correctly play Rogue Mage Double DPS 2v2. In this guide, we cover its strengths as well as its weaknesses, and giving you a walkthrough of how top players make this unorthodox double DPS composition work out. First up, let's take a look at the strengths. With both Rogue and Mage bringing insane burst damage, targets can often die 100 to 0 in stuns without being able to control their character, every single setup. So get caught once without a trinket, and it's likely game over. With Mage bringing Polymorph, Counterspell and Dragon's Breath, if they are fire, on top of the stuns, blinds, sap, shadowy jewel, as well as smoke bomb sub rogue provides, means if you don't manage to punish the rogue mage or interrupt the chain, you'll be stuck in a very long crowd control chain for a very long time. Next up are their defensive capabilities. Mages can slow you, kite you, root you, and just overall make your life a misery trying to connect. And with rogue also having great defensive cooldowns from cloak and evasion, as well as the ability to escape with vanish, makes them hard to focus down. Also, if you do finally connect to a mage, they can simply block before they take damage. Now let's take a look at the weaknesses. The most obvious one being the fact that you don't have a healer. This means reducing damage taken is vital, and you need to close out the game fast before you run out of defensive cooldowns. This brings us to our second weakness, and that is that you are often on a timer. With no way to reliably gain health back outside of dropping combat and eating mage food, you can often find yourself with only having a few setups to secure a kill before you lose. Rogue Mage also struggles against teams with an abundance of defensive cooldowns. Say for instance you face a Holy Paladin. Not only do you have his Trinket to deal with, but you also have his Blessing of Protection, Bubble and Hand of Sacrifice. Often, not having enough time to rotate through them all before you die. Okay, now let's get into some gameplay and cover what strategy you should be using in games. The baseline strat you'll be going to use is going to be crowd controlling the healer whilst attempting to kill a DPS. Let's first look at a perfect rogue mage game played by Narj and Zayu. So as I said, the main strat is going to be here to crowd control the healer, which in this case is a monk, whilst in turn trying to kill the DPS, which in this example is a warrior. Straight from the get-go, they open with a kidney onto the monk whilst rooting the warrior, followed up with a cheap shot. This is done so Zayu can secure the polymorph. This instantly forces the trinket out of the warrior as well as his rallying cry. After this, they don't stop the damage because again, as I've mentioned, we're on a timer. So this opener is going to have to force a lot of cooldowns from the enemy. Due to Zayu getting off the greater pyro, the monk is also forced to trinket the polymorph to save his warrior from what would sure be his death. Narj then instantly blinds the monk after his trinket and continues to keep the damage rolling, using his evasion to also reduce some of the incoming damage, while Zayu continues to kite. Now as I mentioned from the strengths and weaknesses, Rogue Mage has a stun, blind, polymorph, shadowy jewel and smoke bomb as their crowd controls. With blind about to end here, Narj does something extremely smart. Just take a look at diminishing returns. You can see he would be able to stun him after the blind ends, but check polymorph DR. If he kidney shots the monk here, he will still be on diminishing returns for sap and polymorph, resulting in a desync of their kidney shot into polymorph crowd control chain, in which we saw in the opener. So what Narj does here instead is shadowy jewels the monk. This, if you don't know, puts the monk in a 1v1 with the rogue, where he is unable to target his teammate and thus denies all heals for its duration. He then waits till it ends and uses kidney shot as polymorph DR is about to drop, and then stuns the warrior so Zayu has no chance of being interrupted on the polymorph, resulting in the game being for sure secured. Making sure to make correct use of your diminishing returns is vital to make this composition work. For instance, check out this game. They are up against a druid here, which will obviously start in stealth. So the standard kidney healer, cheap shot DPS and polymorph healer opener is not viable here. To adapt, they instead open with a smoke bomb onto the warlock. What this does is guarantee them a strong opener. They combine this with a blind onto the druid the second he's out of stealth. He is then forced to trinket this due to the raw burst that Rogue Mage does inside of the opener. Again, bringing us back to one of our strengths, which is burst damage. With the lock still being low, they can rotate through the rest of their diminishing returns to win the game, doing a kidney shot into polymorph to finish off the lock. Okay, but what happens if you can't kill inside of the opener and the team recovers? 
While Rogue Mage still has some decent amount of longevity, thanks to their mobility and kiting skills, along with the potential to reset and eat mage food. Let's take a look now at a game, this time from Zico's point of view, where the opener doesn't quite go into their favour, to say the least. It's a Resto Druid team, so the plan is again to start onto the Shaman with a blind onto the Resto Druid. However, Zico's Stray Orb breaks the blind. What they do next is continue with the opener, trying to at least force a trinket out of the enemy team. They manage to do this with a kidney shot into ring, again making sure to have the rogue cover the shaman so he is unable to interrupt the cast. With the opener being let's put it less than optimal, forcing this trinket is still a win. So after this they do something that rogue mage can do very well, and that's completely reset. As in the opener, the enemy team is in stuns and unable to deal damage. After the stuns run out, if you don't think you can force more cooldowns, you should retreat and aim to reset. This does two things. Firstly, it will help reduce the damage you take. You're not just standing there and tanking the damage, as you have more than enough damage to easily 100 to 0 a target if your setup is done correctly. The second thing resetting achieves is that it allows you to get your diminishing returns back, meaning next time you go for a setup, you can once again aim to do the standard kidney shot healer into either ring, polymorph or sap combined with the cover on the form of a cheap shot onto the DPS. They manage to force out trinket shear from the shaman. Acro quickly adapts and instead staps the druid three times whilst they continue to deal damage. Recognising they won't kill here, Zico again retreats behind the pillar, avoiding damage and waiting for his diminishing returns to come back. With no trinkets left, the next setup is almost certainly going to be a win. So let's see how they play this. With no trinkets on the enemy team, they land the kidney, polymorph whilst cheap shotting the shaman and make very quick work of him, with a smoke bomb just to make sure. Okay, to sum this walkthrough up, let's take the key most points that you should be looking to execute if you want to pick up this unique double DPS 2v2 composition. Number 1. Make your setups count. As mentioned, with being on a timer, you need to win in the shortest time possible, as most of the time you won't be able to reliably get away and eat your mage food to recover. Failing a setup can easily set you behind. Number 2. Avoid damage. As you have no healer, all damage you take is going to be impact damage, Making sure to reduce it and use defensives early before taking the damage can maybe keep you alive long enough to secure your next setup. Number 3. If you can't kill, reset. Most of the time you can't DPS through heals, so if you know you won't be able to kill, simply try to reset and prepare for your next setup. And lastly, number 4. The opener is key. The opener needs to be strong. A good opener can set you up for the rest of the game. Alright guys, that just about wraps up this 2v2 Rogue Mage walkthrough. Be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching.